If you want to tell incredible stories, but your stories are not landing, it's because of one crucial mistake. In this video, you'll discover what that mistake is and the three proven techniques to fix it and tell better stories than 99% of people. So what's the mistake? Imagine you wanted to tell a story to a friend about a recent presentation you gave. Now here's how most people tell their story. I had a presentation and I was super nervous and I really struggled to start because I couldn't think of the words. But yeah, in the end I got through it and yeah, I did well. So, how did you feel in that story? Not too excited, right? But this is how 99% of the people tell their stories. So freaking boring. The problem with those stories is that they are too generic, too abstract. They give a summary instead of sharing a real story. So, what's the alternative? Let me share how the same story could look, but this time including the three techniques you'll learn shortly. New York, two weeks ago. I'm standing outside of this massive classroom door. All I can think of is, Philip, don't screw this up. This is really important. To avoid that, I make a plan. As soon as that bell rings, I'll walk in, head high, shoulders back, like I own this place. I'll make my way to the center of the room, stop, ground myself and smile. I'll then straight away go into the opening, leaving really no time for the nerves to kick in, I think. It's the perfect plan. Well, five minutes later, the bell rings. Slowly, I open the door. See the difference? The second example is an experience. It's a movie playing in your head. You could see the scene, the character, the actions, and you can do the same in your story. You can become a much more captivating storyteller simply by following the next three techniques. First technique, Provide physical location. Say where you are, name the location. Examples, I'm sitting on the couch of my living room reading a book. Or I'm standing in front of the conference room taking a deep breath. As soon as the audience knows where the story takes place, a movie starts playing in their heads. They hear living room or conference room and they start to visualize it. Maybe it's their own living room or maybe it's a conference room that they have been before. The moment your audience doesn't know where the story takes place, the movie stops and that's where you lose them. That's when you fail them as a storyteller. Have them see the location at all times. But just to be clear, you don't have to describe every single detail of that location. The conference room had a big table, a whiteboard and a screen for the presentation. You don't have to do that. No one cares. Everyone knows how a conference room looks like. Only share those details if they are important for the story later on. Keep it simple. Second technique, describe the action. Take any successful movie in the world. The moment that movie starts, the character is doing something. Walking, driving, arguing, any sort of action. Actually, not a single movie begins with this long explanation of any scene. But this is somehow what most people do in their stories. They somehow think that they need to give context about themselves, their work, or even the history of the world. Don't do that. Instead, just dive into the action. Examples. I'm sitting at my desk, looking at my computer, when a notification pops up. I'm at the airport security check, putting my bags into the bin. And to make it even more vivid, use the present tense. So instead of saying, I was looking at my phone, say, I am looking at my phone. This makes the story feel like it's happening right in the moment. Third technique, relive the moment. That was the hardest lesson for me to learn. For years, I told stories at this intellectual level. I focused on techniques to make them more interesting. I'd think, hmm, let me insert dialogue here, or let me share my feelings so that it's more emotional. Sure, those techniques, they can help. But if you want your story to be unforgettable, you need more than that. You need to relive the moment. So instead of just talking about what happened, close your eyes and and see it again in front of your eyes. Relive it as if it was happening right now. So what did you see? What did you feel? What did you hear? What were you thinking in that moment? Like no need for any fancy technique. Just describe what's unfolding in front of your eyes as you remember it. And yeah, sure, sometimes that might be a little bit uncomfortable. It could be 
embarrassing, maybe sad, or even triggering, your mind will tell you, don't go there, it's risky. But that's the exact thing that will make your story stand out. That is this level of authenticity, of vulnerability, that will make your story stand out from all those other ones. Today, we explored three crucial storytelling techniques, but there are a few more. Now, to discover those other storytelling techniques that the pros use, you may want to check out this next video, where I share seven years of storytelling advice in 55 minutes. See you there.